All right, honors chemistry. This is a, an answers video for La Chatelier's principle. I had originally not planned to put this up, but I'm gonna go ahead. Um, we're in the last week in a school. Some of you may need to get this assignment in, so I wanna be sure you can do this. So let's let's go ahead and get this done. So La Chatelier's principle deals with an, a reaction which is in equilibrium. Equilibrium means the reaction doesn't go all the way from products to reactants. It stops somewhere in between. You may start off with all products, and it moves maybe part of the way over to react to re, uh, excuse me starts with entirely reactants and it may move uh, just a little way toward products may move halfway towards products or it may move all the way towards product but we assume it doesn't go all the way towards products so um what what we're trying to do is determine which way this reaction can also go backwards by the way you could start off with all products and it could move backwards to reactants that's what the double arrow means so we're trying to say that let's assume this reaction is in equilibrium, so it's balanced. It has just the amount of A, B, C, and D that it wants. Now all of a sudden you make a change to this reaction system. And the simple question is which way will it cause the reaction to move? Okay? So let's go ahead and we'll just do that with some examples. Let's, let's talk about a couple more features of this reaction. First of all, obviously it's a fictitious reaction. A, B, C, D are not real elements. It's just a, a generic fictitious reaction. What it, this is saying also is that on the product side, you, you're going to get C plus 3D plus heat. That means heat is going to come out of the reaction. That's why the delta H, the enthalpy is negative. That means heat is coming out and that's an exothermic reaction. So the plus heat on the product side means heat is coming out of the reaction. It basically means what that's saying right there. Okay, so first, let's deal with concentration. So changes in concentration, think of them like um, a crowded room. All right, if you increase the concentration of either A, B, C, or D, the reaction is going to want to move away from that side because it's like you have too much of that either reactant or product uh, for the reaction to be comfortable. It's no longer in equilibrium. So concentration of A is increased. So over here, you've increased how much A. So remember, at the beginning, everybody's happy. You're in equilibrium. You have just the right amount of everything. Now all of a sudden, you put more A into the reaction. So it gets crowded over in this side. There's too much A. So what it's going to do is move the entire reaction to the right. So that's going to move to the right. And the term for that is favors products. Products are the things on the right. All right, so that's the answer to that. What about the concentration of C is increased? So now you're increasing something on the product side. So you've thrown it out of equilibrium. You put more of this in, into the system than it wants. So what it's gonna do is start breaking down D and the C are gonna come back to make A and B. So they're gonna move to the left. So this one is gonna move to the left and we say that's favor, favors react. Okay, concentration of D is decreased. So again, everybody's happy, and then all of a sudden you take D out of here. It doesn't have as much of this. So your room on the, on the right side, again, the crowded room concept, the room is less crowded over here. Uh, so it's more, so what you're gonna have is A and B wanting to move over in this direction, because you have less D than you really would like. So you're gonna start creating more D to counteract the fact that you took some out, that you decreased the concentration. So that's gonna to be to the right. Okay, so that's how concentrations work. They're pretty easy. If you increase the concentration on a particular side, the reaction is gonna move away from that side. If you decrease the concentration on a particular side, the reaction is gonna to wanna to fill in, it's like filling in a hole. It's gonna to wanna to fill in and, and get back that, get that concentration back up again. Okay, temperature. Temperature is increasing in the reaction. Okay, so here's the way I think of it is this reaction wants heat to come out. That's what this is saying. Heat is going to come out of this reaction. If you increase the temperature, you make it harder for heat to get out. This is, this is kind of my reasoning for this. It's harder for heat to get out. If you're in a very hot room and so the temperature is very high, it's hard for, and you turn on a heater that's right next to you, you don't even feel the heater because the room is already really hot. Let's say the room's already 100 degrees. You're not gonna feel the heat coming out of the heater because the room's already hot. And it's gonna be hard for the heat to get out of the heater into the room. Remember what heat is. 
It's a flow of energy between a higher temperature and a lower temperature. If the, heat of, if the temperature of the room is almost as high as the temperature of the heater, it's going to be very hard for the heat to get out of the heater. So if you turn up the temperature here, it's going to be hard for this heat to get out of the reaction. And therefore, it's not going to favor, the way you think of it, it's not going to favor products. It's going to be hard to make heat. Therefore, the reaction is going to get pushed backwards. Okay, So that's going to be to the left. So just think about that. You have Maybe you come up with your own kind of, how, you know, how you reason that out. But that's going to be favoring reactions. Okay, the room is already hot, so heat is not going to be able to get out and escape into the room. Uh, therefore, the reaction is not going to move to the right. It's going to move back to the left. It's got to move one way or the other, we're going to say. Okay? Temperature is decreased. Now you're in a really cold room and you turn on a heater. You're really going to feel that heat right away if you're sitting next to it. Because the room is cold and the heat coming out of the heater, bam, it hits you. It's almost kind of like a wave that hits you. And so that means the heat is going to come out very easily. In other words, you have a high temperature difference between the heater and the room. There's a big temperature difference between them, so the heat's going to come out into the room very easily. Similarly here, if you lower the temperature of the reaction, it's going to be easier for the heat to escape. So that's going to be to the right. And that's, that's how you do that, okay? Okay, let's go on to number two. So you have a reaction, 2NO2 produces N2O2. Now that is that is an error, there's a typo there. It doesn't really affect the nature of the question, but we should have it corrected. It's gotta be N2O4 to make that balance. If you check that out, now it's a balanced equation, okay? Uh, it doesn't affect the questions down below, but we should do it right. Okay, we are gonna say it's exothermic reaction, so I could have written plus heat here. So let's go ahead and do that. If it's exothermic, then heat has to come out on the product side. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same types of questions. Concentration of N2O4, again, we're gonna correct that, is increased. So what it means is it's already in equilibrium and then you come along and you increase the concentration. Somehow you put more of this substance into the reaction vessel, wherever you're doing the reaction. So it was in equilibrium and then you stuffed a bunch more of this. So it's the crowded room idea. The room on this side is too crowded now for the equilibrium, so it now wants to move back to the left. And I'm just going to write left, right, left, right, but you now know what favor product, favor reactant mean. That would be favoring reactants. Okay, concentration of N2O4, again, let's change that, is decreased. So now the room on this side is less crowded. You've taken some of this out. So to get back to equilibrium, the reaction wants to move to the right. It wants to create more of this to compensate for the fact that you took some out, so that's to the right. Okay, concentration of NO2 is increased. Again, crowded room. You've made this side more crowded by increasing the concentration of this, so it's gonna move to the right. Okay, concentration of NO2 is decreased. Again, you made this room less crowded. You pulled some of this out, so to go back into balance, this is gonna wanna decompose and, and make more of this, so that's gonna move to the left. Okay, temperature is increased. So again, heat wants to come out, but if you make the temperature of the reaction vessel hotter, it's harder for heat to come out. So it's not gonna wanna move to the right, it's gonna wanna move back to the left. Here's another way you could think of that that I didn't mention up above. You could turn this reaction around. You could write it like this. So I just turned the reaction around because it is a reversible reaction, so you can do that. So what it means is if you wanted to go in the other direction, you'd have to add heat. So if you turn the temperature up, you're adding heat, that means the reaction is gonna go this way. So in this case, it's the same thing. If you turn the temperature up, you're adding heat, that means the reaction is gonna go back to the left, okay? Temperature's decreased, just the opposite. It's gonna go to the right. It's easier for the heat to get out in a cold room than in a warm room. Now pressure. Okay, pressure, this is one that's interesting. Let's look at PV equals NRT. Okay. Now let's say temperature is constant here, R is always constant, and let's say we're in a constant volume container. So the only thing that can change is P and number of moles. So if you increase the pressure, you're going to increase the number of moles. But remember by doing that, it was already in equilibrium, it was already happy. Now you came along and increased the pressure, therefore that increased the number of moles. But the reaction wants to go against that. It wants to get back into equilibrium. So what the reaction's gonna want to do, this is what you did. 
you did this, you did this, cause the pressure to go up, and therefore you caused the number of moles to go up. But the reaction, you can think of it as having a mind of its own. It says, I don't want to go up. I want to go back to my equilibrium. I want to go back to where I was happy. So to counter that, the reaction is going to reduce the number of moles. So you increase the pressure. That increases the number of moles. Reaction says, I'm not happy. I want to go back to equilibrium. So it's going to decrease the number of moles. So when you increase the pressure, it's going to go in the direction that creates fewer moles. Because more moles means more pressure. It wants to reduce the pressure. It wants to get the pressure back down like this. So this is the reaction doing these two things. You did these two things. The reaction wants to go back to where it was. So it's going to lower the pressure. And it does that by reducing the number of moles. So it's going to move in the direction that has fewer moles. Here on this side, it has two moles. That means 2 times 6.02, 2 times 10 to the 23rd. Here it only has one mole, 1 times 6.02, 2 times 10 to the 23rd. So it's going to want to move in the direction of fewer moles so that it will reduce the pressure. And in the case of this reaction, the fewer moles is on the right side. So that means it's going to move to the right. It's probably the trickiest one to understand, but just think about it a little bit. Just go back and play it back and listen to my explanation again. Okay, pressure is decreased. Let me write it a second time here. PV equals NRT. And let me draw a line between these, okay? So pressure is decreased. So you, this is what you do, you somehow decrease the pressure. The pressure goes down, okay? That is going to mean, in order to keep the equation in balance, the number of moles is going to have to go down you reduce the pressure. That's going to make the moles go down. However, the reaction says, I don't want, I want to go back to where I was. So it's going to want to increase the pressure back to where it was. And therefore, it's going to want, in order to do that, it needs to increase the number of moles. So this is what the reaction is doing to counteract, to go against what you just did. Okay, so it's going to go in the direction of creating more moles. So in this case, this side has two, this side has one. So it's going to want to move to the left. It's going to go from one mole on this side to two moles on that side. That's going to increase the number of moles. That's going to increase the pressure back up. So in this case, it goes to the left. Okay, and that's all you have to do. Um, if you take AP Chem, we do a lot more of these problems, and you'll really get comfortable with these types of problems. This was just kind of an introduction. Okay, so that takes care of lesson 22 on Le Chatelier's principle.